Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the Deputy Minister. On public units, public housing units, how much money, how much money does the province pay or your department pay each year to maintain those units that we have throughout the province? What is the budget for maintenance? Thank you for the question, Mr. Turner. The, the annual amount is $34.5 million. Thank you. The, um, I, I guess, are these units, are they inspected on a regular basis? I guess, like, people get these units, and, and obviously some take better care of them than others, but I'm wondering, do we have a policy there where we, where we actually go in and inspect the units on a regular basis to make sure that they're, uh, they're up to, uh, to standards, quite frankly, or, or that people are taking, uh, being respectful of the units that they've been, uh, been uh, and permitted to live in, I guess. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yes, the, the uh, units are inspected regularly. In addition to actual inspections that are done, we also have maintenance staff that would go in these facilities on a regular basis who would, rather than doing a formal inspection, would just review to ensure to, to see if there's any issues. Along the same lines, I'm wondering uh, what what type of waiting list do we have for public housing? Like, how how many people would be on the list uh, in the province currently? Trey, December 31st, 2020, it was 55 Okay, as of December 31st, uh, 2020, the number on the wait list was 5,512. Now, that's not specific to public housing, Mr. Turner. That's just the wait list that we have across the board. Uh, it doesn't specify. Uh, it could be subsidized housing through rent subs. It could be nonprofit housing, or it could be public housing. It's 5,500 people are waiting for assistance with housing. Thank you for that. I, I, I've heard figures like that, I guess, with my time uh, in the legislature. I've heard those kind of numbers. My, my question is around that. Uh, do we, do you, your department, um, go back on this list, check this list out, update the list? Is it updated at all? Like, like out of those 5,500 people, maybe there's people in there in that system who have found housing, who have found um, or maybe they've relocated or moved on or whatever, or maybe, unfortunately, maybe passed even. Who knows what it might be. But So is that, is that list really accurate, or is it just, it's just the list that's out there and it's not really maybe totally current or valid? Okay. The, the list itself is updated annually, uh, and also names are taken off that wait list as, as they find new housing or if they advise us that they've found something on their own and no longer require the province. But we validate it annually. So it, it really takes, uh, it takes the individuals to let you know. They're just, it's not a, it's not a um, prerequisite, I guess, of the, of the department to actually check back with these people to see if they're still in need or not. The department, yes, we do check back annually with everyone on the list. Uh, but it, within the year, if someone finds housing, uh, they, they will advise us. Or we, if we are the ones that have assisted with finding housing, we take them off the list then. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I'm also curious, I guess, how many individuals have gotten off of social assistance by finding gainful employment in the last year? Do you, do you have that type of information? I know people sometimes get on social assistance, and we think that's uh, that it's a dead end. But I know a lot of them do find employment, and I, I think that would be that'd be like good news or good information sometimes to show people that there uh, there is uh, hope at the end of the uh, at the end of the tunnel. I guess at the end of that, it's not a, it's not an end. When you get on social assistance, it's going to look like it's a dead end. It's hopefully just a stopgap to move on to finding employment. Uh, thank you again for that question. In fiscal 1920, so the year ending March 31st, 19, uh, 2020, uh, more than 1,885 clients accessed work services programs. So those are partnerships between uh, social development and post-secondary education, training, and labor. And more than 1,214 of these clients no longer receive social assistance as of March 31st, 2020. So that's, that's, 
I think that's very encouraging news. It's good to, good to see that progression, I guess, that people uh, are able to uh, to move on. I can say that it's not a permanent situation when they get on assistance. And I'm sure no one wants to be there, and it's good to know there are there are opportunities for them uh, to move on, and that you're working in that in that regard. At the same time, I, I, that really completes my questions uh, for today. I do appreciate the opportunity to uh, have the, the discussions we've had and, and get the information that we've been able to uh, obtain here the, today. And uh, thank you uh, very much to you and the department for being here. And thank you, Madam Chair, for your indulgence. Thank you.